In this segment of our documentary film, we're going to introduce you to someone who's been in fashion since he was nine years old. A sage, a guru for modeling, fashion, style, art, commercial, you name it, he's done it. Tiffy Grimes is here from Sacramento. She's showing you the epitome of what a model should be. Models, you know, I, I don't mean to sound crazy or anything, but models don't have opinions. They just show up and do what they need to do. They wear the clothing. Your job is to sell the product, and as you can see, she's wearing it well. This is a form of repurposing fashion. We had a designer by the name of Rocky Orenez take one of his previously designed skirts and repurpose it. By that I'm saying he took the skirt and turned around and added the underpinning so to, to further the uh, color blocking. He, we also took a man tailor shirt. I created some necklaces here. This would be from a lamp, you all. So we're taking things that are just around the house to create fashion. So fashion is nothing without you. We have a young lady here in town by the name of Jessie Shin. She's from Transformation Makeup right here in Sacramento. Again, so you mentioned that these were here like made out of a lamp. You know, there was a lamp cord, and this, like you use ruching, velvet ruching. This took the place of the velvet ruching, these, these lucite balls. It's going back to how can you create something that's right there in your house now. Now about models, do you have any tips for any up and coming models or just models that are already in the game just trying to get more tips? Well, I always say to models, remember that you're on a job. It's business before it's anything. So I always say to models, you have to be equipped. Um, when models are first starting out, I say if you're not used to wearing high fashion clothes, go to the department store and try stuff on so that you can get used to wearing quality stuff. Most importantly, you need to be able to show the designer's clothing in the best way that you could possibly do it. It's important that you also know that you have no opinion. If a designer says this is what they want you to wear, if you don't want to wear it, then don't show up to the audition. Models are not there to complain and be getting caught up into things that they don't want to do. It's all about following the direction. If you're going to be a good model, a good actor, actress, a good actor, you have to be able to follow direction. So that's a part of it. Make sure you understand that it's not nothing to do with what you think. It's about the designer's vision. So it's important that you be able to follow what's going on. So for the models that are already going on in the game and they're just looking for tips, you know, I know there's different types of category of modeling. And I know not a lot of models may know what category they're going into. So could you just shed some light on what different categories are out there? You know, you have, uh, you have catalog models, you have runway models, you have print models, you have showroom models. There's different types of models and you need to investigate what area you're, in, you're really trying to get into. I know for one thing, you know, there are rules that are actually forever in modeling. Here in Sacramento, people tend to break the rules a little bit more because we're in Sacramento. So you may see a model that may show up and she might be 5'2 and she might work. So it's important that you understand that you have to, it's almost like dressing for the occasion. You have to prepare yourself for what you're actually going for. I say to models, keep your stuff current. Current. If you're getting pictures taken, the moment you change your hairstyle with those photographs, the pictures are no good no more. So you have to understand that you have to keep yourself flexible. Get around and find out as many photographers that are in town. Uh, that are in town. Do some testing with these photographers. Find out what's going on, what works with you. I would say to some models that are out there, go do some hair shows. This way you can get a new look. Now some of you might think your hair is so precious that you don't want to trust it to somebody else. But understand one thing about hair shows. When you work with hair shows, you actually are working with the best people that these hair designers can come about with. So a hair show can bring you that new look that you've been looking for. So as an up and coming model, as a model that's already out there, you have to remember that you always have to change because it can't stay the same. We covered the models. Now let's go into their portfolio. You know, what should we look for? when it comes to building our portfolio as professional models. Any portfolio that you have, there should be anywhere between seven to 12 pictures in the whole book, okay? Because you gotta look at it, you have to look at it this way. If you have 50 pictures in your book and you don't, and you don't get the job, that's like almost like self-defeating. So if, if, if they're gonna pick you, they'll pick you with 12 looks. 
you know, and then the book adds on, but you don't want to fill your book with a whole bunch of photographs. You definitely, you do not never want to carry your contact sheets with you. Your contact sheets not only show your best work, but they show you messed up. So you only want to show your best work. So your portfolio should be a collection of your best work at all times. Fashion has basically taken over America. You know, you have all these different fashion shows and the whole nine yards. And what most people don't understand that fashion has become business. Yeah. But you have to realize and understand that there's no such thing unless you're involved. You know, you got a lot of clothes hanging on racks the whole nine yards until you step into those clothing and you add your own personal style and taste to those clothing. It doesn't matter what type of clothing it is, what price point it is. If the person that's wearing those clothing doesn't have any flair or a little bit of, eh, it ends up just being clothing. So fashion is nothing without you. This set is in the streets. This set is uh, it's on the road. It's, on, it's in front of everyone. Well, most designers are coming to the streets anyway. They're going to go to the streets to get their inspirations. They're going to look at the people. Because basically, if you're a designer, you know, it's one thing to always want to come out and do this most fantastic idea that you have in your head but you have to always keep the public in mind so we you know what better way to do a show than taking it to the streets you know like you have the story the beauty and the beast so we're tying together what's beautiful and what's considered or told to be not beautiful this building that's basically in shambles you know what i'm saying but what i'm saying is most designers and most people that are actually creating clothing actually turn to the street to get their inspiration, to get their, you know, um, to get their designs and stuff. Most people don't really know that Versace used to travel the red light district and watch prostitutes and get his vision from the things that they wore. So wow. that's what we call taking it to the streets. Beyond the project, there's so many things that led you to this moment in time. Well, you know, I got into modeling, into fashion per se, uh, when I was nine years old. And how I got into modeling was I had a twin brother and my mother was this clothes horse and she used to take us shopping all the time. So at this particular store we shopped in, the people asked, could we, the twins, be in this fashion show? This so was, you were how old? I was nine. Nine years old. Nine years old. Wow. And so, you know, uh, what was crazy about it was I fell in love with it. My twin brother was like, okay, whatever. But modeling became a part of my world. I, the clothing, just, I liked getting dressed up. Mm. Okay, and so what better way to do something that you like that you like to do? Stay well, in the modeling. Yeah, you know, well, I got to wear great clothes. Good. Well, you, well, they do say you know if you love it, stick with it. Well, you know, the thing about it was it it it, it opened up a lot of doors to a lot of different things to me. At the time when I was trying to do modeling, modeling wasn't as accessible to me as a person at that particular time so it took me to a level where i decided well if i'm not going to model then i'm going to be the hairstylist the makeup artist the photographer the choreographer the designer i needed to stay in the business so even though i couldn't work it also pushed me into other things so it made it possible for me to have a, a great career in fashion well you've been doing many things you've been doing more than just modeling and just fashion you also do art and everything as well yes you know so I guess to kind of go layer by layer, mm -hmm. let's go layer by layer. Um, <laughs> what got you into doing more styling as well rather than just modeling? What got you into that neck? I received a job as a stylist for Nordstrom Department Store. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed into that industry for 12 years. And so I took what I learned in my fashion and in my modeling and I took it over to Nordstrom and became a stylist for them. And then when I moved to the Sacramento area, I became the uh, visual merchandising manager for Nordstrom that's in Arden Fair Mall. Um, the styling, it just, you know, I just like wearing clothes. I like making, uh, making clothes. I also make clothes as well. So I, it was easy for me to walk in Nordstrom and become a stylist for them. What is modeling to you? Well, you know, models, models are, they're professional clothes hangers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have to understand how many times have you been into a store and you see clothes hanging there and they are very unattractive to you. Mm. So the only purpose for a model is to have these clothes to go around something, mm. clothing around. So, you know, if it was possible for them to take a hanger and just slide it down the runway with the clothes on it, they would do that. But clothes need to be alive. So that's why we hire models. Models are in the business of making things look perfect. Okay, I said illusion, if mm. you will, because no one's perfect. So, but we help people decide that maybe I want to look like that, or maybe I want to wear my clothes like that. Mm. So models are there to help set a standard. Models need to know that you're in the business of wearing clothing. Mm -hmm. 
you're in the business of selling, before you're into anything else, remember one thing about modeling. Models, models are salespeople. We sell a product. Whatever that product is, we're selling it. Okay, so um, if, it's, if, you, if you want this to be more about you, then maybe pageants should be what you want to do. But if you're doing fashion and you're doing modeling, you have to remember that the star of the show is the garment you're wearing. It's not you. It's your job as a model to make certain that you're showing the best advantage of these clothing what's the most important thing about them that's your job is to bring it to my attention fashion to me is a sense of self you know you have fashion you have that part that includes the clothing but fashion you have to understand goes through time it goes through changes you know like everybody's stuck on the 70s we like that period of time yeah. because the fashion that was in the 70s was very loose and very free okay we lived in the 70s during that time we did things or we said things like do your thing what's your bag and that kind of stuff like that so fashion takes on attitudes of the time we're living in a time right now where the economy has affected fashion so everybody has learned a new way to shop and yeah. we're not going back that way. We're repurposing clothing. We're taking, we're taking what was and turning it into what is. And so the, that's in allowing the person, the individual, to get more into the fashion because they are putting themselves into it. So we're going back to the way of the 70s. You know, we used to tie-dye our own stuff. We used to make our own love beads. We used to wear our jeans until the holes actually came there. We didn't wait. We didn't pay a hundred something dollars to have somebody tear them up for us. So now fashion has become more multi-purpose, if you will. Uh, what's your level? You, you, you know, fashion is more about the style, having the look now versus having the actual item. That's why you got so many knockoffs out there. Uh, because I don't need to spend $3,000 for a Louis Vuitton bag when I can get the look for 50 cents. Mm. So that's what fashion has become. You need to be able to, you know, it's all about having an eye, okay? Just long, you know, fashion is, is you. Once again, wh who are you? We are also aware that you educate. You educate models in your own boot camps. You know, tell us a bit, a bit more about that. Well, what, what goes on in a boot camp is like, I, you know, I have models come in and we actually do what we call jam sessions. Uh, we, we get in there and we actually do impromptu fashion shows. But what my mo main focus is when I work with models at these boot camps is to make certain that they develop a style that's theirs. You know, once again, going back to all these project runway shows and TV shows, models have a tendency to try to emulate what they see on TV. So you end up with these girls walking like Palopony ponies, which really is a polo pony. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> But they start galloping somewhat. And so they don't really have a smooth approach on the runway. So that's, it's my goal to teach them how important it is to start and to finish. You know, it's one thing to hit the runway, but how's it look when you stop? So all these different things are, you know, are brought about. I talk about the importance of a hand. You usually can tell a rookie model by their hand placements and what they do with their hands. Mm -hmm. So all these things are covered in workshops. How you, uh, how you approach the stage, how you exit the stage, all these things are taken in there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. With fashion, you know, we've gone over all these things. I haven't gone over the future of. You know, I know you got a lot of a lot of thought of, so uh, let us know. Where do you see fashion in the next millennium? Well, you know, once again, going back to the uh, the downsizing of everything in the United States, uh, we won't see people going back to shopping the way they used to. You, you won't see people frivolously just shopping. So I see people doing a lot of repurposing, like I've said before. They're going to repurpose their clothing. What I had last year, how can I make it different for this year? Because we don't really have that discretionary amount of money that we could just throw out on fashion anymore. So uh, I can take a jacket from last year, put a belt around it, or just take the sleeves and push them up, lift the collar, it becomes something new. So you gotta become magician-like. Uh, you have to be aware of the CPW factor of clothing, cost per wear. When you shop and you buy clothing, or how many times are you gonna really wear that, okay? If you buy a jacket and only wear it one time, you have wasted your money. Yes, so when you go shopping from now on, people are going to have to start considering what's in their closet already. When I buy something, what else does this go with versus just buying it for a one piece, one, one date type thing? So multi-purpose. You want multi-purpose wardrobes today. Mm. Things that can do more than one thing. I want to be able to take, if I go to work today and I get a last minute phone call, we going out after work, I want to be able to switch this up real quick and have a whole new look. For my last question. Yes. Okay. Okay. What level of cool are you? <laughs>
What level of cool am I? Up to nine thousand. You know, I've never been asked what level of cool I am, but uh, I do consider myself a tough act to follow. Beautiful. So, uh, what level of cool am I on? I'm pretty chilly. I am from the, uh, the East Coast, so I like the winter. So I'm pretty icy. Icy? Yeah, I'm in the freezer. So he's I'm Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. Yeah. Sub-Zero, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Jay. thank you. <laughs>